Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. Most of you know me. Essentially, I'm the person that's the laser guy. And some of you basically have tuned into these YouTube videos to figure out how it is that laser works. This is a video for YouTube on how it is that histones are actually the key to why it is that frequency-specific low-level laser therapy functions. Histones are proteins that are associated with the DNA of the cell, essentially. <clears throat> the laser that we use, essentially, is uh, designed to uh, induce the mitochondrial DNA of the actual target cell to do what it's supposed to do, and how does it do that? This is important because your clients are going to ask you this, and also you probably asked yourself this. So hopefully you can see this to some degree. This is a depiction of histones. What you have is a blob of chromatin, which is great big blobs of chromosomes. You have, we have 23 pairs of them in our body, in our, in our cells. And they basically come out to chromatin like globs, essentially. And then as they're stretched out a little bit further, you can see that there are blobs of proteins called histones that are globbed together and the DNA wraps itself around these globs called histones and of course then becomes if you if you stretch it out that's actually the DNA of the actual product now the question is the DNA basically goes along wraps around a blob of histones and then goes around and lops, wraps around another blob of histones and it's come compressed together in chromatin compressed together in chromosomes it actually looks like a great big pile of spaghetti if you will all massed together, but nonetheless, that's the function of it. So why why histones are there in the first place? Also, histones are a family of proteins. There are thousands of different kinds of histones, and the histones are created by that section of DNA that it's wrapped, that wraps around it. So why would the body actually code to produce a, a, a protein histone unique for that section of DNA? And that is the key. That is the key to why frequency-specific low-level laser therapy exists. Consider the fact that. You unfortunately have injured yourself and you're paralyzed from the waist down, unfortunately. You can't feel anything uh, from your waist down. God forbid that never happens. But let's say you were going along and you crunched your foot on your mechanical wheelchair, for instance. Now you have a broken toe. Is your toe going to heal? Well, of course it's going to heal. But how does that happen? You can't feel it necessarily. You can't induce it to heal necessarily through sensation or for nerve function. But rather the midbrain of the, of the, of the skull... Corpus callosum basically directs frequency-specific uh, electromagnetic radiation at 635 nanometers. That's the color of light that carries and is turned off and on 20.5 times per second. And that corresponds to a section of the fibroblast DNA that codes for collagen. And this is actually the important part of what the histones actually do. Because as the body, or in this case, as the, we artificially do this with the laser, as the laser does this, essentially, delivering the 20.5 cycles per second, we emulate what the midbrain of the body is actually doing, essentially, and, and accelerate and increase the actual response, which is why we can get non-union fractures to heal, why we can induce all the other aspects to heal. But let's say we're developing and delivering that particular type of electromagnetic radi radiation that's turning on and off 20.5 times per second, and it's going to basically hit the cell. The aceptor site on the outset of the cell basically transfers that, um, that message through microtubules into the nu nucleus, which then it, it transfers it into the nucleolus, and, this, and the histones, this is the important part, the histones are like sympathetically vibration um, ke um, chemicals or <clears throat> structures that basically engage that section of the DNA to function. And what it does is it peels this DNA, which is an alpha helix, okay, you're familiar with that, and it peels it open and then allows messenger RNA to code against that opened up DNA and that messenger RNA, it's called messenger RNA because it runs out into the cytoplasm and takes that message, that DNA message, to the ribosomes. In this case, they grab onto a proline and hydroxyproline molecule and put them together in a polymer called collagen. And bundles of collagen, which looks like Coke cans that are charged, are spat out into the, to the cytoplasm and they auto-arrange into a... Uh, a tendon, a ligament, connective tissue, a joint capsule, or a bone trabecula, in this case repairing the bone that is actually fractured in the toe. This all occurs, but the key are the histones. The histones are the reason that we have frequencies, and the frequency's specific nature of accepting that information shows that each section of the DNA that codes for what it is that we're interested in has a specific histone that basically is sensitive to that electromagnetic frequency. Now, if we use different wavelengths, the, the histones just ignore it. But if we use this, a protocol called 
non-union fracture or fracture repair. And it's about 16 different frequencies, one for pain, one for blood supply, one for connective tissue. The 20.5 frequency is in there, essentially, and also frequencies for um, blood input into their lymphatic drainage, et cetera, et cetera, and also for a condition called um, uh, non-specific or um, uh, an area where the body completely ignores that particular area, essentially. And for scar tissue, and so we have those frequencies, about 16 of them are being programmed into this fracture right now. I have no idea how I broke my knuckle. My daughter, God bless her, broke her uh, capital head, uh, radial head, uh, doing um, a acrobatic move for um, ballet, ascension aerial, and she hyperextended her elbow and broke her, her uh, radial head, essentially, and we're in the process of lasering her, she'll probably heal inside of a week and a half as opposed to eight weeks and she'll be able to uh, compete here in another uh, couple of weeks essentially when we use this technology. So this is the reason that we have um, a frequency specific laser therapy and the coal and the underlying key to this are histones that are coded and produced by the section of DNA that are sensitive to a specific frequency. That frequency basically allows us to reach out and stimulate those parts of the mitochondrial DNA or the DNA of the target cell to induce healing, which is the nature of why we use frequency-specific laser therapy. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. Your clients, a lot of your clients want to know how the funny little red light makes the boo-boo go away. You may have an interest on why it is that this technology exists. I used to teach genetics at the college level for about three years at Washington State. Essentially, we learned that histones had, had an, uh, a specific uh, use and a specific application in the last 10 years. It's important that you are able to understand this and utilize this information because if you know how it is that this technology works, it makes a lot more sense and its application becomes a lot more effective. So thank you for listening. I appreciate it. If you have any more questions, you can contact me or you can email me. I would have you keep this YouTube video handy because clients are going to want to listen to this or at least they're going to want to have this kind of information so they realize that this device is nothing short of amazing. It is the, it is the state of the art for laser therapy on the planet right now and I'm lucky to work with a company that ha creates this and programs this with my programs. Thank you very much and have a great day.